So I see a lot of people asking, how on earth can you train in an indoor range? You can't shoot on the move, you can't target transition, you may not be able to draw from a holster, and usually you can't rapid fire. But the reality is, there's still a lot you can do in a single lane on a single target. And today I wanna to go over some of that and show you guys exactly what you can do in an indoor range to build high standards of proficiency. So the first thing is obviously accuracy. And you don't need a range that allows you to rapid fire to be able to work on this and focus on this. But one of the biggest problems I see people doing in an indoor range is they get one of the provided targets, it's a full human silhouette, humanoid or whatever, they put it at five yards, and since they can't rapid fire, they're shooting around a second, around every two seconds, but they're shooting into a target that's literally this big. That's not high standards of accuracy. To work on accuracy, you wanna give yourself a smaller target. So what I like to do is I take our cadence circles off of our website. Honestly, it doesn't really matter what targets you use. You get a piece of paper and draw a square with a Sharpie or something. But something small that requires a focus, requires finessing your sight picture, really making sure you're splitting the difference properly, and then put rounds into that. You don't have to shoot fast. You don't need to be able to rapid fire to do this. So I was gonna demonstrate kind of what that looks like. I have a bunch of different pistols here. This is a stock Glock 17 with stock iron sights. Yes, I know they, they'll probably like break and fall off the gun, but they work fine nonetheless. So I'm gonna load the gun and I'm just gonna slow fire. I'm not giving myself a timer. I'm not giving myself conditions. I'm just focusing on accuracy, shooting into these little circles at five yards. I can push it to seven if I want, 10. I could even try to shoot them all the way at the end, which is 20, but we'll just go to five. Top circle. Yeah, we're good, we're good. All right, so bring it home. So slow fire, nothing crazy. And I can work on this all day. I can just work on my accuracy. I can shoot a bullseye target. I can shoot a little square with a Sharpie. So this is something you can work on in an indoor range and build your accuracy and then push your target further back. If you are shooting a full size humanoid, Send it all the way to back. Shoot it at 20 yards. Shoot it as far back as your bay will let you. 25 yards, 20. This bay is 20. So yeah, 20 yards is pretty good if you're shooting a full-size target. The next thing you can work on, which is really important, if your range does not allow you to draw, which most of them don't, unless you go through a little test and then get your like draw card, like this range, roll range does. But if you can't draw, that's fine. You can do what's called working from compressed ready. So you start with your pistol here at your chest, you literally drive the gun out, you find your sights, and you take a shot. And the reason this is important is, no matter how you're drawing the pistol, whether it's from concealment or from outside the waistband at four o'clock, you're always presenting the pistol from here with both hands. So the motion is the same every time. So all we're doing is taking out the draw, because maybe you're not allowed to do it, and you're just working from here. And this is something I see a lot of people neglect. They think, oh, I want a fast draw, and they think the fast draw is all like right here when in reality, a lot of it is actually pressing to target and finding your sights quickly and consistently every time. So you're not having to finesse the sight picture. As soon as the gun goes out to extension, my sights are lined up, I'm good to go. So that's all I do. Same thing, I have these circles at five yards. I have my pistol, stock Glock 17. And I just start the gun at compressed ready, both hands on the gun. And when I'm ready, I just drive the gun out, <laughs> fire around. I'm uh, executing proper follow through, so I'm finding my second sight picture. I'm getting back on the wall of the trigger in case I need to fire again. Once I'm done with my follow through, I bring the gun back, reset, drive, follow through, bring the gun back, drive, follow through, bring the gun back, drive, bring the gun back. This is probably one of the best drills that you can do in an indoor range right here, just presenting the gun, finding your sights, and firing. You could do a single round, you could do two rounds, you can do five rounds. And again, you won't need rapid fire to do that. You can do this all day. You can then practice the draw at home with dry fire, and then both of them will mesh together just fine when you go to a range that allows you to draw and live fire. So as far as accuracy goes, here's a fun trick you can do. Take a regular letter piece of paper, fold it in half, and this makes 
a A zone on a regular IPSC target. So you don't, if you don't have IPSC targets, because they're like a dollar each for the cardboard ones, take a piece of paper, fold it, and this is an A zone. And the actual A zone is a little longer, but that's fine. Higher standards of accuracy. So I'm going to put this up. Put it, I'll put it over here. And we're going to send this all the way to the back, 15. And we are going to shoot six rounds from compressed ready. So slow fire. I'm not uh, rapid firing because it's nice and far. Uh, and I know I'm shooting into an A zone. So this would translate over to shooting a regular IPSC target, USPSA target at 15 yards. I'll use my RMR 34. All righty. So six rounds at 15 into a A zone sized piece of paper. It's a good test you can do, and this target doesn't cost anything. It's literally a piece of paper folded in half. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm good to go. So while you're shooting these drills, there's obviously things that you need to be watching and paying attention to, which is very easy to do because you're not adding in a lot of movement. You're not adding in target transitions. So the big one, obviously, you want to be watching is how you're gripping the pistol. Gripping the pistol in such a way that uh, means the pistol is moving minimally. So I have a high tan grip with my dominant hand. My support hand comes in, fills these grooves, and I maintain this grip through all my uh, drills shooting in here. And that's something you can pay attention to. Even if you're shooting a drill where you're not necessarily focused on focusing on accuracy, but you're just focusing on is my grip changing while I shoot all 15 rounds? It can still be slow fire. And then you check your grip and see what's going on. Another one to watch, and this is probably one of the biggest ones, and it's probably the hardest fundamental in terms of a pistol shooting, is how you're manipulating the trigger. So I want to show you guys uh, kind of what you want to look for. So every, pretty much every pistol has a defined wall, and then they have different amounts of slack uh, in the trigger. So obviously a Glock like this one, there's a lot of slack going on before you get to the defined wall. What I see some people doing is they fire their pistol from as soon as their index finger touches the trigger, and they yank from there. You don't want to do that because you're causing unnecessary tension into the pistol, and that usually drives the pistol down, usually down and left. So what you want to do is you want to take all that slack up, go to the wall, and then press from the wall. I like to shoot the gun with the pad of my finger, so I'm not gripping the trigger with just a tiny bit of finger. I'm also not knuckling it. Although there's some shooters who make knuckling it work, or they make using the tip of their finger work. I've found using the pad works the best and then straightening my finger out like this. So I'm not curving my finger on the gun like so. I'm flattening my finger out uh, on the pistol, on the trigger itself. This uh, is a little bit dependent on people's uh, finger length and how uh, big their hands are. I've seen some people who have trouble on some pistols because they have short hands. The trigger sits further forward, and so they're forced to literally touch the trigger just with the tip of their finger. So that does, that, that can affect things a little bit, although generally speaking, it's not usually a big deal. So what I'm doing is I'm paying attention to keeping my finger on the wall, firing from the wall, as the gun is recoiling, I am letting my finger off the trigger and then I'm getting back onto the wall while the gun is still reciprocating. And this is very hard to, uh, to start doing if you're in the habit of pinning the trigger to the rear where you pull the trigger, the gun cycles, you slowly release. As soon as you get that click, you fire again, which is what most people do. So they're letting the gun dictate when they fire. They're not actually deciding when they want to fire the gun themselves. As soon as they hear that click, of the sear of their reset, they go bang, and they prematurely fire, and that usually leads to poor accuracy. I want my finger to be ready to fire, and I can decide when I want to shoot, not when my gun is resetting, and then I fire instinctively. So what I'm doing is I'm pressing the trigger, and then I'm releasing my finger very quickly to get back on the reset, and then I can take all the time in the world on the wall, ready to fire, and then fire when I want. So what that'll look like here, if I'm training this, I have a uh, target here at three yards, and I'm not necessarily focusing on accuracy in this case. I'm just focusing on what my finger is doing. So I don't really care what's happening here. I'm isolating out. I don't have to have Olympic accuracy every drill I shoot because I'm focusing right now on the trigger. So I'm literally just gonna fire one round, and I'm paying attention to what my finger's doing. So this is what pinning the trigger to the rear sounds like. So you heard the click. And the problem is, a lot of people, and I used to do this when you pin the trigger to the rear, is you let it dictate 
when you fire. And that's bad because you're going to have poor standards of accuracy and you're letting the gun control you. You're not controlling the gun yourself. So what I do when I'm focusing on my trigger stuff is I'm just, I'm not paying attention to what I'm, like the accuracy. I'm just going <laughs> off the trigger, <laughs> off the trigger, <laughs> off the trigger, <laughs> off the trigger, <laughs> off the trigger. <laughs> Just like that. And I'm trying not to get that audible sear click. As soon as I fire, my finger's coming off, back onto the wall, then I can check my sight picture, see if it's good to go, and then I fire again. So focus on that. It's, it's, it's very hard to get into a good habit of resetting the trigger and recoil, and it's something that could take you months, but you can easily do it in an indoor range. If your indoor range does allow rapid fire, and there are some out there that do, here at Royal Range, it's a case-by-case -case basis. If the RSO sees an individual who is you know, somewhat competent and has common sense and they're not flopping the gun all around like a dead fish but they're holding it and they're you know, controlling and they're firing as they're finding their sights, uh, they'll allow them to shoot as fast as they are provided it's obviously effective and it's competent. If you're at a range that allows you to do that, that opens up a lot more stuff you can work on. Now you can work on you know, much more recoil management and throttle control and different things like that and also your cadence. So the big thing here is working on your grip. I like shooting drills of five or six rounds because that's enough rounds, especially if you're shooting quickly, to uh, identify if your grip starts to fall apart. Or you can shoot 10 or 15 rounds. But if you're doing what I was doing earlier, just shooting a single round, presenting and firing one round, you can get by with a bad grip doing that because you're not being tested in recoil by shooting a lot of rounds. So what I want to do is I want to demonstrate for you a real simple drill you can do every once in a while just to see what your grip is doing. You take your pistol, you take a full magazine of 15 rounds or 17 rounds, whatever it is, or 10 rounds if you're in a state that is unconstitutional and you know, prohibits you from having a full magazine, and you just shoot all of that in one go into a target as fast as you're seeing your sights, uh, but have the target close enough that it forces you to shoot quickly, and then see if your grip deteriorates and if your grip starts to open up. Typically, for someone who their grip starts to slip, their rounds will start pretty good, and then they will start dropping, and just it'll just open up, and it'll look really nasty. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I have a stock, or not stock, but I have a Glock 19 with uh, suppressor sights, 15 round magazine, and I'm just gonna fire into uh, the top circle as fast as I'm seeing my sights and they're uh, rising and falling, and we'll see what my grip is doing, and we'll see if the group changes dramatically. Whew. Let's do this. All right, so my grip did not change through that course of fire. Um, everything's inside, it's really nice. So now I know, okay, my grip isn't, you know, it's not falling apart too much. If you go ahead and shoot something like this and you see that your grip opens up, then start diagnosing. And what you can do is then take uh, another magazine and just shoot same target. I really like our cadence circles target for this reason because I have six circles. I'm just going to isolate out and I'm just gonna fire five or six rounds. I'm gonna grip a little bit tighter. I'm gonna make sure that these three fingers are uh, nicely into the grooves of my hand that my left hand is being pushed nicely against the, uh, the grip of the pistol, and this is what my grip looks like, and I'm gripping tightly. I can't tell you guys exactly how tight I'm gripping because, I mean, you guys don't have my hands, you don't know, but I'm gripping the pistol nice and tight, and now I'm just gonna fire five, six rounds into each circle, uh, focusing on speed and focusing on my grip, and rapid firing. <laughs> And that one threw one a little bit high. But my grip is good to go. I'm not losing my grip. So if you're in a range that allows you to rapid fire, this is a whole other area that you can focus on and work on is throttle control. I can now push this target a little further away. I can shoot a bigger target much closer, and you can kind of see what's going on. Those are just a few things that you can work on in an indoor range, but it'll keep you very busy. Typically when I go to my range, which is, you guys have seen it, it's a big outdoor range, it's, it's our range, and I can run around, do whatever I want, shoot 180 degrees, 200 degrees, targets of all sizes and ranges. I'm actually not always doing that when I go to my range. I'm typically just shooting a single target doing what I just did right here shooting cadence circles, working on alignment, working on presentation, working on recoil, checking my grip, checking my trigger press, 
It's usually all I'm doing. And then every once in a while, I'll do a big cool drill where I'm running and gunning and doing uh, cool stuff. There's a lot you can do in an indoor range. You can probably spend years doing this in an indoor range to build high levels of competence and proficiency. If you want to use a shot timer in a, uh, in a range, an indoor range, there's a few considerations. If you are sharing a, uh, a room with a bunch of other shooters, your timer is going to pick up all their shots. Now you can slip in at your timer possibly if they're all you know, not shooting a lot or maybe they're taking a break. Um, but using a shot timer indoor range is probably something you're not going to be able to get away with. Um, but maybe if there's only one or two people in there, you might be able to swing it. So I would say still have a shot timer so you can track how fast you're presenting the pistol, how fast you're getting that round off, or maybe you're checking your splits uh, if you're shooting something a little bit faster. So that's something to think about. And then if you are in a place where you have an indoor range and so you can't run around, run and gun, things like that, consider looking up a shooting competition, IDPA, USPSA, or IPSC. Uh, typically, indoor ranges may have a match that they actually host. Here at Royal Range, they host a couple matches a month on Thursday evenings. And that's when they open up this bay right here and dudes can actually go out, they can run and gun, they can shoot multiple targets, and they're not restricted to just one lane. So do that if you want to actually draw, fire, move around, shoot multiple targets. Competition is a great way to build firearms proficiency. It won't get you killed in the streets like people say. It's a good way of learning how to do this and how to shoot. And at the end of the day, shooting a target, pressing the trigger, is exactly the same as if you're shooting a person. It's the same stuff going on. How you grip the pistol, how you align your sights, how you press the trigger, it's all the same stuff. I'll be doing a video soon on how to train with a carbine in an indoor range, but ultimately it's a lot of the same stuff. Shooting small circles, up drills, finding your sight, it's pretty much all the same stuff. It all carries over. In my opinion, shooting handgun is much harder than shooting a carbine. There's a lot more going on. And so, uh, but I will do a video on that for you guys so you can see what's going on. Hope this is helpful. Thanks so much for watching.